IRC. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the results of my contest, which I had a little while back. But before I get started with that, I'd just like to apologize to you for t it taking me so long to give you guys these results. It, the deadline for the contest was a couple weeks ago, and I haven't gotten around to making this video until now. I, I have been busy with school, so I kind of have a reason, but at, at the same time, you guys worked really hard to make a make these games for my contest, and the least I can do is review them and give you guys a result in a timely manner. So so I apologize for that. So, moving on. I've received five submissions for this contest, which sadly is one less than last time, but, but with a, such a small amount of submissions, I can still talk about each of them individually and feature them. So that's what we're going to go ahead and start with. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the what, what I liked about the different games and what I didn't like about the different games and t tell you a little about them. So the first game I'm going to talk about is a game called... For boats and castle. In this game, you basically explore th through a castle and you find new areas in the castle by collecting keys and opening doors with those keys. So one of the things I like about it is that it um it did put a lot of effort into the a ambience of the game, all of the extra features in the art style that take more work to add but don't necessarily add anything to the gameplay. But they do add stuff to the design and how it visually looks. For example, he had torches on on the walls that were animated. There's one part. There's a throne room. It has multiple tile sets for the uh, platforms that, that he used, so I thought that was really, really neat. And throughout the game, there are more features you, f you find which allow you to progress further in the game. For instance, you start off by finding darts, and you, use, you can use those, and then what I really liked was the arrows, and I liked really like the cloud effect with the arrows, and I thought that was all really neat stuff. So some, some stuff I didn't like about it were, was the game over screen. Whenever the, the game ended, whenever you died, the game closed, so in order for you to play again, you have to restart the game and load it up again. and I found that quite annoying. I imagine you, you did it because you wanted to um, sort of show the make it more permanent, I guess, that and so that people that way people don't take their dying lightly. But I, I feel like that might be a step too far because it's it's really annoying to have to reload the game every single time. Another thing I found a little odd is that I like I said the ambience was really good. Like I liked how, um, how much effort you put into the art style. Even added rain. I didn't I didn't mention that earlier. Yet. The rain effects all looked cool, but. You made your character a little green ball, which, nothing wrong with making your character simple, sort of minim minimalist style, but it's, it sort of contrasts with it, with everything else you did, so that so I, I feel like you, you should make that a, a different, I suppose. Alright, the next mission I talk about is a game called Dark. So in this game you are, I guess, an Indiana Jones type character, you're an explorer, and you're, and you're walking through a dark library, I suppose. So it's a big maze of a library, and it's dark, and you can't see very far. And there's these monsters with that shine rays of light, and if you get spotted by the monster, you're basically dead. That that's um, basically how the game mechanics work. And one of the main things about it is that you can find maps throughout the maze or the library, and using those maps, you can find your w way around the area. Like like using the maps, it'll it can lead you to the destination of the level. It can show you where the monsters are, and it can just give you a general outline of how the place looks. So so. I thought that was a very ambitious idea, and I thought that was kind of cool. So, so the map system is one of the features I, I liked about it. I thought it was st not something I've seen before. I thought that was neat. So another thing ni nice about it, the graphics look look nice. You use uh, isometric style, which made it look that much more professional and, and finished, I suppose. And yeah, and it had the auto save features, which is not a little thing that's that's nice. With the dark, you had a nice surface effect, making the light smooth. So, so all all, all those are are good things. So now for what I didn't like about it. I feel like you needed to change around the way the player died. So the player died by coming in collision with the searchlight of the monsters. And the searchlight of the monsters is mo moves 40 degrees every so many seconds or so. Some of the problems I have with it, with it are that you could be walking by, and then if it happens to touch you, you're ba basically dead. It's not, it's not clear how you died. And another thing, if you walk into it and just don't notice it, once you walk into it, the light goes away. So... It, it's still, you can't tell how you die. I feel like this is a bad game design. In game design, when you die, you want to know how you die. So that way, the, when the player dies, they they don't think, oh, how on earth that happened. Then they know how it happened, and they want to go back, and they try and play a different style to fix it. But if it's unclear how they die, then that's, that's a problem. So in, in this case, maybe before it switches angles, maybe have a warning area so that you can see this, this spot's about to light up. i got to move from it. And also, when you die, don't make the light disappear so that way you can see that you die by the, by the light because well it took me a while to figure out how that system worked and it's just very fresh it was it's very frustrating to figure out in the beginning and even when i under knew what it was i felt like i died randomly without without any cause because i can't really predict when it's going to change angles another thing that i, I felt like you fixed is you had, you had a couple glitches like every now and then when i grabbed a map or move on the next room it i would get an error 
and also when you move around it's very easy to screw up the um, animation sometimes you'll be standing still and be keep animating you're facing down and you go to the left or the right or something like that and just little things that you people notice I mean they're not a big deal in the grand scheme of things but it's something that you definitely notice when you're playing the game that probably should be fixed next game I'm going to talk about is called Death Rise Arena so this game where you fight an arena against a bunch of monsters and you try and kill as many as possible and you kill them with an assortment of weapons that you find from looting monsters. So, now that we're on the topic of assortment of weapons, that is one thing that I really like about this game. There are so many weapons and items and upgrades that you can get in this game. There's a whole achievement system, and there's a whole list of stats that you can use to upgrade your player, and the loot that you can get from other characters, there's probably like at least 20, probably like 50 or maybe even 100 different items that you can get from them. And they involve upgrading different things and all kinds of weapons you can use and all the weapons have really nice like animations and just that's just all very well done and the graphics have a bunch of a lot of extra effects that make it look nice like a bunch of surface effects adding blood to the ground and nice icy rain in a few, few parts so I think that all looks pretty good so something I didn't like about it where I, I feel like when you first start the game I feel like it's really overwhelming like when you when you go into the world you have the blue eye, which says directions, and you have all the directions printed in small text right there, and then behind that you have a bunch of items, and that, that's all very o overwhelming. Sp overwhelming. And, well, f for me in, in particular, I, I'm i not familiar with this type of Diablo-esque um, format, like some what my friends were more so than I was, but I found it overbearing in the beginning, getting used to the whole system, so maybe if you can find a way to bring in slower, or at least make the the uh, starting point look less less overwhelming maybe because the I think it's kind of it's important because it affects the first impression people get of the game so it's sort of getting bad first impressions so I, I feel like that should maybe, maybe be fixed that that's my suggestion next game I talk about is a game called Ilconic and this game is basic idea of this game is you you run through a side scrolling level and a, as you run there are things flying at you, you need to dodge them so and I thought it was kind of neat the the things that you need to dodge are done with pretty nicely done particle effects and when, whenever you start getting hurt, whenever your health starts going down, resolve getting hit by those things, or there's several ways to show up, but you did it by making the screen crack, which is something I haven't seen before, and I thought that was really neat. And um, as you're running, the, I felt like the physics were done pretty well. When you jump into the air, you move slower, which is uh, something that a lot of people don't take into account. It just makes it look all more realistic and works well with the way you have the limbs set up in your character. So something that I didn't like about it, well, the main thing I didn't like about it is there's no sense of progression. The, your stuff I said earlier made it seem very promising, but if you don't have a sense of progression again, that's a big problem. If you play it and nothing changes as you play it, you're not, enemies aren't getting harder, enemies aren't changing, the, you're not progressing through levels, then th it doesn't give the player a sense of achievement. It doesn't feel like they've achieved something. They haven't reached next level, they haven't reached this new top score, There, nothing's happening. There aren't anything new added. So you, um, it's, that's kind of really important. You're, you're going to want to have a sense of progression. But other than that, I feel like you could make it a lot better if you just started adding more features as you go along through the game. The beginning is promising. Alright, last game we're going to talk about is called Dare Aeroconic. And the way this game works is you navigate through the levels, you unlock doors, and you and you basically... It's not really a maze, but you have to go through little puzzles to un unlock doors and go through from... Uh, area to area, and the whole time there's this big scary Ilconic creature chasing you. So one of the big things is unlocking of doors. So you walk up to a door and you pick the lock. So you made a little mini game for that, you made a little mini game for that, where you have this block and you have to navigate around a little maze to open lock. And it's not hard, it just takes a little bit of time, which um, will come in later. But I thought I thought that that was, that was neat. It reminded me of Ratchet and Clank when when you, I would have to go through a little mini game every time I had to open a door. So another thing I thought was cool is that it was like legitimately a scary game. You didn't make it scary by making the graphics hard to look at or or anything like that. You made it sort of psychologically scary. So there's this big scary monster, the Ilconic, walking around ch um, trying to get to you. And and whenever he comes close, you start getting, having scary music playing. So when you're picking the locks, the game is still running in real time, so you can still hear them coming closer. So if you're like at a door and you're at a dead end, you need to pick the lock, you go in there and you're trying to go through the little puzzle, picking the lock, and you can hear things getting closer, and that's just a very creepy feeling. I feel like you did that very well. Another thing that's kind of cool is you added a level editor to the game, which is a cool extra feature that, that you added. So some cons, or a big problem with this game is, well, the navigation isn't the standard WASD or the arrow keys like like most games are, which you did it like, um, like an RTS game where you would just click and the player would use Pathfind to get to that point. 
which I thought was cool at first, but now I'm thinking you probably would have better off going with arrow keys. Because that type of pathfinding system works in an RTS game because you don't really care about the little minute move movements, which a as you would in a platformer game where you need to land on platforms like that. You just want character to move from A to B. So if that was all you needed to do in the game, that would have been a perfect, uh, that would have been a fine system. But you have that system, but you do ha you have elements that require the more precise um, movements. Like you have puzzles where you need to move around blocks, which require precise movement. And then you also have sections where you need to navigate over buttons in a certain way so you don't trigger something. So these require precise movements, but with the mouse system you have, you can't do that. And on top of that, it's just kind of a buggy system. I, there, there are many times where I couldn't make the player do what I wanted him to do. That, that, that's a problem, but I, re I really like the psychological scare factor that you had. Alright then, now for the verdict. So I'm going to go through this a little differently than I did last time. I'm not going to just tell you what the, my top three are. I'm going to explain to you my logical processing of how I chose it, because I, I had some trouble choosing this time. First off, I felt like a Death Rise Arena by the Deucey one. I felt like that game was was the best game, because, well, it had so many features, it had more more items in it that I, than I could fathom. He implemented the whole leveling system, all the graphics looked good. I, I had a hard time finding criticism in it, so that I felt like that one was was the best. So congratulations, the Deucey one. You have won the copy of Game Maker Studio, and you get first pick on the one of the three games that I talked about in the original video. So next I have to figure out who to give second and third place to. Well, for as far as um, the game Ilko you know, the side-scrolling game where you dodge thing, made, made by Dying Dark 626 Again, he didn't have any sense of progression in the game, so I, I feel like that's really, really important. I feel like you can't have a game without a sense of progression. You have to play it and have a sense of achievement, have a sense of you beat the level or you got, got the score or something like that. I also like to emphasize that I, I liked what you did with the art style and the, um, you know, with the way the glass breaking. I, I feel like it, it, it's very promising, and I would like to see how it turns out when you add some more features to it and add some progression. progression. But but sadly, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I could have you in the top three because of that error. Okay, so that leaves the center, central three, which are Verboten Castle, Dare Ilkonig, and Dark. So these three are very close. I had a lot of trouble choosing between them. So, but but here's how I end up deciding. For Bowden Castle, I felt like of the three was the most polished. It was the most finished. It ran the most smoothly. Dare Elkonic and Dark had some had a few quirky errors that made it seem a little bit less finished. But for as far as um, which one was the most finished, which one seemed like the most ready, I guess I, I felt like that goes to Bowden Castle. But at the same time, I feel like he he played a little safer than the other two. Like the the concept, there wasn't anything. Um, too far out of the ordinary, while um, Der Erkonig and Dark had some n new cool features which I haven't really seen people try before. So for that reason, I, I don't feel like I could give Verboten Castle the second place, because one of the main things I talked about was how they could be innovative with the theme, but I, I'm going to give uh, Verboten Castle third place. So congratulations, uh, Root Beer Gamer 42 You have won third place in the competition, you get third pick on the game. So now comes the decision for second place. We're now down to Dare Ilkonig by Firemaster 300 and Dark by Battlefronter 2. This was a very tricky decision. I actually went back and forth a few times. Um, and then the I feel like you guys both tried something new and innovative with your games. So it comes down to which one of them ran the smoothest, I suppose. They both had a few errors. When um, in Dark, the errors were sometimes annoying every now and then. I felt in um, their Ilkonig, the errors made the game pretty much unplayable at some points. So for that reason, I'm going to have to give the second place to Dark by Battlefronter 2. So congratulations, Battlefronter 2. You have second pick on the game, and you are second place in this tournament, in this contest. So that's the end of this results announcement. I was very impressed with all of, all of your submissions. Sadly, not everybody can win, but like I, I tried to tell you what I liked about the game and, and give you some constructive criticism as well. So um, I hope I wasn't too harsh on, on anybody. I'm, I'm sorry if I was. I didn't mean to be. I'm, I'm simply trying to help you guys get better at making games. I'm trying to make you guys better game designers. With that, let's end this video. Thank you so much for watching and for all your guys' support over the years, and I will see you guys in a future, a future video. Thank you very much.